Welcome everybody to today's edition of Talk to an Expert with Inside Literature. I'm Caitlin and I am joined today by Abby. Abby is a makeup artist based in Boston. Hi, great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us today, Abby. Um, let's dive right in. Today we're going to be talking about what it's like to have a career in makeup artistry. So first, just to ask, how did you get into makeup artistry? So I've always been into makeup from a young age. Um, I played around a lot with color and experimenting with looks on myself in my late teens and early 20s. Um, and decided I wanted to try it out. So I got a job at Sephora and learned a lot of like more technical skills there um, to improve my artistry and to learn how to do makeup on other people. Um, during that time, I also attended cosmetology school to explore different realms of the beauty industry. However, I found that in cosmetology school, their major focus is really on hairstyling. Um, we did, I think, a week of makeup training. Um, so I, I tried doing hair as well for a little bit and found that my true pa passion was always with makeup. Yeah. Um, so I pursued that a little bit more and I eventually um, was able to quit Sephora and start working full time as a freelance makeup artist directly with clients. That's wonderful. So it's really good for our audience to know probably that if you're interested in a career in makeup artistry, cosmetology school might not be the exact place you want to go. Correct. <laughs> so it's important to talk to the schools you're looking at and ask them what their focus is on, what the actual study schedule looks like. Yeah. And so maybe as you were saying before um, we started recording, like if they have a makeup package or a makeup program specifically for makeup? There are definitely certification programs at a lot of like aesthetic schools um, that focus on makeup um, and it's I actually I did do one of those at one point and it was a good way to get my starter kit um, because building your kit is a long process. Um, what does that years. mean exactly? What is building your kit? Um, having all the right tools and products to do any look on any skin tone um, at any time. Um, oh, wow. So that's <laughs> all the brushes, all the foundation, all the concealer, mm -hmm. all the eyeshadow palettes. Yes. That's a lot of stuff. I will also say working at Sephora, I got a lot of... Um, it's called gratis. The brands will uh, bring you products to try. And a lot of building my kit was from those products. Um, well, that's a good thing to note. Yes. And I, I also want to say that there are schools for makeup. Um, they can be pricey, um, but it is another way to get into it. Um, but I, I really found I got all the training I needed on the job, hands-on at Sephora or I mean any any makeup retail. Right. Yeah. That's really excellent and good for our audience to know that schooling isn't necessarily the only way to get into this career, especially if you're a young creative type looking to get into a different um, industry. That's excellent. So my um, my next question was, now that you're not working for Sephora anymore, you're a freelance makeup artist. Yes. How did you start, how, what was the transition like between working at Sephora and going out on your own? I mean, it was a slow one. I, I, am, I started freelancing on the side while I was at Sephora and did it, tried to balance it as much as possible. Um, but I found that the greatest demand was on the weekends. And that's also when they needed me to work at Sephora. So I took a leap and decided to try doing it full time to see if it would work out. Um, I, when I started, I primarily got my clients through an app um, that, you, that I, I auditioned for. Um, and then basically they just send you the clients. 
Oh, that's great. So you, the, what's the audition process like for that? Um, so I had to bring in, I think, two or three models and do different looks on them. They had to go through my kit and make sure that it was good product um, and, a, and the correct product. Um, they gave me a lot of guidance too on how to build a perfect kit. Um, and, you know, I have, a, I have it on a backpack. Everything I need is in my backpack. Um, so there's definitely ways to condense it. Um, and that was really helpful to learn how to do. Uh, so, you know, get advice when you're building your kit, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they, so they have um, like educators that did the uh, observation for the looks I created and then they gave me feedback. Um, and I, that was it. I, I, it took about four sessions before I even knew that I had the job. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Okay, and so that app, you just open your book, sort of like a ride share kind of thing, say I'm open exactly. for working and they'll book you appointments. Yeah, so I set my own schedule with them. Um, so when I was working retail, I would just open my hours before and after my shifts. Um, and yeah, they, if your book is open, it means that you're available to take an appointment and you just show up, you confirm, and then you just show up at the address at that time. Um, and it worked pretty well. From there, I, I also gained a lot of private clients um, who I met through the app. Um, and then it sort of spread, you know, word of mouth, um, I have Who's a website. Well. Oh, you have a website. Good. Yeah. So yeah, I, it's a process. So, you know, I started with the app, then I built a website so people can contact me directly. Um, I sort of focus my site more on bridal um, because I find that's sort of what people are searching for when they're looking online for a makeup artist. Um, mm -hmm. I also work for a few bridal companies specifically. I had to audition for those as well. Um, and for most of those, um, airbrushing is a requirement. So um, I learned how to airbrush um, through the educators at the app that I work for. So um, there are definitely resources for that. Um, but through the, the bridal agencies, they, they do the same thing. They just book me bridal trials or wedding parties, um, and I just show up. Excellent. And so, so as you said, it really, this app is what sort of helps you launch the career and then making that network and keeping up those connections and making those private client relationships is up to you. Very important, yes. Excellent, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and promoting my, honestly, social media as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say your own website, your own specific makeup page um, is how a, most people are finding their artists right. these days. Speaking of social media, there is a difference, right, between being a makeup artist who puts makeup on other people versus being a YouTube tutorial makeup artist who puts makeup on themselves, teaching other people to put makeup on. It's you are not a YouTube <laughs> tutorial makeup artist. Yeah. So what is what would you say the real difference between those two careers is? So like when I started doing makeup, I was playing around on myself and playing with colors and having a great time with it. I had an experience where I tried to do my friend's brows one night and I had no idea what I was doing putting makeup on someone else. It's a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. um, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> I, I'll say also like, like doing a wing liner on someone else versus doing it on yourself is, yeah, very, very different. Um, People have different skin tones, um, skin types, um, eye shapes, face shapes, um, and you have to sort of know how to work with someone else's features um, and knowing the right products and tools to 
it's not, you know, a root, like a, a routine look that you do on yourself and you know exactly how to do it every day. You're, right. it's a new face every single time. Um, yeah. so you really have to learn how to work on other people. You can do a beautiful look on yourself, but not be able to execute it on someone else. Yeah. That makes total sense. Definitely. So, um, Abby, what would you say the top three tips you have for an aspiring makeup artist are? Um, I think, I mean, makeup artistry is an art. So with any art, you need to learn your products, your tools, um, and, you know, how to use them. Um, you need to practice on other people, like I was saying before. Um, key, if you want to be a makeup artist, it's not doing makeup on yourself. That's not the job. Um, and, and learning colors, um, sort of knowing color harmony, um, like what looks good with what and on different skin tones and undertones, um, balancing sort of the colors on your look. Um, it is creative expression and knowing color, uh, color harmony and balance and what colors look good on different skin tones and undertones. Um, and just knowing that it's, it's a creative process and these are the building blocks that will help you express your art. That's excellent, yeah. Because a lot of people might not think of makeup artistry as an art, but what you're doing is no, no different than what a painter does, right? You are painting someone's face. It's a different medium. I, I mean, I'm using powders um, yeah. and, I mean, and creams, but I'm using brushes and I'm, I am painting faces. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. Yeah. So Abby, would you, right before we go, would you tell us about your look today? Of course. So I did a fairly natural complexion uh, because I wanted the focus to be on my eyes. Um, it's definitely important to have a focus when you're doing makeup. It, you can have a bold eye and a bold lip and that's, that is a look in itself, but just know, have a plan sort of before you execute it. Um, yes, yeah, so I personally, did a natural complexion today and mainly focused on the eyes. And I did a sort of orangey peach look with a little bit of glitter. I, so I'll, I'll tell you how I did the eyes. Um, I started with an eyeshadow primer and I dabbed that on with my ring finger very gently. Uh, and then I took a peach eyeshadow on a flat eyeshadow brush and pressed that onto my lid and then took that same peach color on a blending brush um, and brushed it into the crease and softened the edges a little bit. Um, then I took an orange on a smaller, like a detail brush, um, which is also pretty firm, and placed that, sort of pressed that on into the outer corner. Um, and then took the blending brush um, and softened that. Mm -hmm. um, I also brought the orange underneath a little bit, more focused on the outer corner, um, and then used a little bit of glitter glue and tapped this on with my finger. Um, well, I love it. Mascara. Look. So any tips for our listeners before we end this call? I would say remember to be creative um, and express yourself that way. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. Nobody starts out doing a smoky eye perfectly and be patient. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think have fun. That's probably the most important. Thank yeah. you so much, Abby. We're so grateful to you for having this talk with us today and we hope you guys all enjoyed.